Good Sorry, afternoon to all of you and a welcome to all, all of you. I would like to thank the moderator and the Sigma Tau for the very good chance to stay here. So this is my first slide. I would like to start with this because this is a, a place where it's full of gynecologists. There is not a urologist. All of them are gynecologists. Just to stress that infertility is a problem that regards the couple, not only the women and not only the men. And um, about 15% of couples are suffering from uh, problems within pregnancy. Infertility is the inability of a sexual active, non-contracepting couple to achieve spontaneous pregnancy in one year. This is the WHO definition of infertility. But which are the main causes of infertility? Mainly we have three different groups of uh, causes of infertility. The first one is the lifestyle. The lifestyle is very important because uh, drug abuse, smoking, uh, alcohol, all of these things, pollution, are not uh, good friends of fertility. On the other side, many pathologies like diabetes, hypertension, cancer, all of them, they can bring to infertility as well. And the third big family is when you have a primary pathology of the male reproduction system. And again, this is a, a good, a good uh, reason of infertility. But all of these causes that brings to infertility are related to oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is the main topic of today, is what we have to really understand to go directly to the therapy and to what we can do against infertility. Sperm, sperm is, the, um, is uh, so much related to oxidative stress because oxidative stress can, can bring to so many different kind of damages of sperm on all of the parts of the sperm. So you can take in consideration the tail, you can take in consideration the head with the DNA material and even the natural defenses of the sperm. Because uh, you have to imagine that uh, ROS, the reactive oxygen species that are related to oxidative stress, are like the pinballs that bounce against the sperm, creating damages to the sperm. And as much as you have of ROS, as much you have the chance to have this kind of damages. But talking about ro reactive oxygen species, what is really important is to understand the concentration of this reactive oxygen species. And is really important because if you have too much, you can have so many damages like sperm immobilization, lipid peroxidation, cell death, all these kind of damages. But even if you have a, a small amount of reactive oxygen species, it's not a good sign. So you need to have a small amount, but not zero, because even the ROS are needed from the sperm for its maturation. Even the mitochondrial function, all of you knows that the mitochondria are fundamental for the energy metabolism and uh, the ROS are able to create damages to the mitochondria as well at so many different kind of parts of the mitochondria. So you can act on the DNA of the mitochondria, you can act on the membrane of the mitochondria and uh, you can act even on the potential of the membrane. All of these are causes of damage of the mitochondria that are fundamental for the energy metabolism of this elements. Another topic that I would like to introduce is the varicocele, because uh, you know that varicocele is uh, really important and is really related with infertility. So my question that I would like to, to ask you is, is there any relation between varicocele and infertility? Varicocele treatment can improve fertility? So we'll try even to answer to this couple of questions. Looking at the guidelines, it's, um, we can see that the Mainly, the infertility for the male is related to um, possible causes that we know and causes that are idiopathic, so we don't know. Idiopathic, as you can see, are almost 30%, and in the other 70% of causes, we know the cause of infertility, and 15% is related to varicocele. So, in accordance with the guidelines, varicocele is the first known cause of infertility for the male. Again, with the guidelines, says that the varicocele is related to semen abnormalities, to decrease the testicular volume, and decline in lytic cell function. So, guidelines confirm the importance of varicocele against fertility. <coughs> Furthermore, there is a report that um, if you treat varicocele, the size of the testes will, will uh, increase the catch-up growth occurred and reach the expected growth percentile. So, treating varicocele can bring to a better function of the testes. But 
it's important to um, to see what is uh, on literature. So I I took out some pa- because it's full of papers regarding varicocele, but I took just the the latest. So something that is really new and is really uh, interesting. So this is a paper of uh, 2016. Uh, is including um, 88 patients. But it's interesting because it's divided in three different groups. Uh, the subvaricocele, because this is another important topic. So is important the subvaricocele, is important to treat the subvaricocele. And um, people that have varicocele but with the normal zoospermic situation is important to treat in accordance with this paper that is divided into subvaricocele, normal zoospermic varicocele, and astenoterdo zoospermia patient with varicocele, in accordance with them, if you look at the data, it's important to treat varicocele only when you have an asteno teratozoospermia. If the sperm is normal and if you have a subvaricocele, it's not necessary to make any treatment. And this is even confirmed from the numbers that you can see here, but more with the DNA fragmentation that is the main index to evaluate the fertility status of a, of a man. And even the malonyl DNA, DNA is another parameter that you can use to evaluate the fertility. So as you can see with these rock curves, this is the difference between pregnant and non-pregnant. There is a, a really strong difference in DNA fragmentation between people that were pregnant and people that were not pregnant. So the importance of varicocele only when you have an astenoterdozoospermia in this case. This is another uh, paper of this year is um, is making a, a report, is making a, a summary of what we know about varicocele. And uh, this, this flow chart, the first one, it's interesting because it's saying that the varicocele um, can have an action on endocrine factor, can bring to testis hypoxia, scrotal hyperthermia, reflux metabolites, and calcium accumulation. All of these are causes of elevated reactive oxygen species. So as I told you before, again, reactive oxygen species that bring to DNA damage is the main cause of infertility bring from the varicocele. So varicocele is related as the other cause that we saw before to DNA fragmentation and to the elevated reactive oxygen species. But the other question is... uh, is important to treat, when do you have to treat, which is the best treatment? Oh, on this presentation, I didn't focalize on the best treatment kind um, that today we recognize as the best. But is recognized from the guidelines that if you treat a varicocele, you will have a significant, significant increase of the clinical, um, of the sperm, of the quality, and of the fertility status. While the guidelines as the papers that we saw before, doesn't suggest any treatment for the subclinical varicocele. These are mm, a a meta-analysis. This is one of the latest meta-analysis regarding um, pregnancy rate, because all all you know is that the pregnancy rate is the most important parameter to evaluate the success of a treatment. And this is taking into consideration more than 100 papers, but uh, after an exclusion, exclusion, it remains only five papers. And by the end, making a meta-analysis of these five papers uh, is in favor of the treatment, because the pregnancy rate is in a statistically significant way increase. As well, if you consider again the pregnancy rate and the live birth rate, in patients that is undergoing an uh, ART technique, even in this case, if you submit the patient to a varicocele treatment, even in this case, you will have an increase in the the pregnancy rate and the the live birth in couples doing the ART techniques. And now, moving from the um, surgical treatments, it's important to talk even about medical treatment, because we understood that uh, you can have an increase in oxidative stress, you can have an increase in the reactive oxygen species, but can we do something to have a better situation, to decrease this ROS and to have uh, less oxidative stress? What we are thinking about is the antioxidant that might, might help in keeping the balance between ROS production and clearance, because as I told you before, it's important the concentration of the ROS, because they don't have to be too much, but they even don't have to be too less. So it's really important to keep the balance of the concentration with the ROS. Carnitine, 
they are very good in uh, this uh, in this kind of um, situation because they have different kind of actions then the first one is the the capability of bringing energy into that into the cells because you know they they act on the mitochondria and on the metabolism of the mitochondria they are even able to take out toxin from the cells so brings the energy inside and takes out the toxin from the cells plus another recognized action of the carnitine is uh, is uh, on sperm but is related on the maturation so in the epididymal lumen they will help the sperm to maturate and to become better and even on carnitine we have so many trials uh, is uh, is something that has, uh, has has been discovered so many years ago and i would like just to show you the which are, which are the most important papers so we can start with the fertility and sterility in 2005 with this big paper that is including 60 patients and is doing a six months of treatment and three months of no treatment. So what they want to see if um, after six months you will have an increase of the quality of the sperm and after that you um, take out the compound, what will happen? These are the results that are, um, that are good. And um, in general, if you take acetyl L-carnitine together with L-carnitine, you will have the better result. As you can see here, the association of the LC plus LAC, you can obtain the best result. And uh, from here, you can see what happened at the three months with the placebo. This is what happened with the association. You have the maximum uh, strength of increase at the sixth month. And after the... This, the, um, the suspension of the treatment, you will have uh, a decrease, but you won't arrive to the baseline level. So you can keep the result even after the suspension of the treatment. And um, in this case, if you look at the total sperm motility as well, the results are really good and are in favor of the association between ALC and LC. And what it, it looks like is that the main effect is thanks to the ALC. So it seems that the ALC, it works only if it's associated with the ALC. So the most important is the ALC. The pregnancy rate, this is another important parameter. Even if it was not a, an endpoint of this study, they reported 12 um, pregnancy and the 9 occurred in the patient that were doing the treatment. This is another important paper because this is a meta-analysis of 2007 that is evaluating the most important parameters of the sperm and for the concentration, again, is in favor of treatment. For the total sperm motility, in favor of treatment. For the forward sperm, in favor of treatment. And for the atypical sperm forms, is in favor of the treatment. But the pregnancy rate, that, as you know, is the most important parameters, again report that uh, if you do treatment, you will have better chance to have a pregnancy. And this is the last paper on 2015, and um, I selected this one because it is interesting, because uh, it's taking into consideration a population that is um, really common, so patients suffering from varicocele grade 1. So all the doctors, they don't know what to do with a patient suffering from varicocele 1. Is it important to treat or is not important? Is it important to make surgery or is not? And this is a, a paper that is uh, making a point on this, uh, on this question. So this is a, a picture where you can see the difference between non-fragmented and fragmented DNA. You will see all the halo against the, the sperm. And in this case, you will have a non-fragmented DNA, while on the other side, you have a fragmented DNA. They took these patients, they give them the, the compound, and um, what they found that was statistically significant is the difference in the, in the um, not in the DNA degraded sperm, but uh, in, the, um, in the SDF and for the total number of sperm. These two parameters received a statistically significant increase after the uptaking of the compound. So again, we have uh, uh, an evidence that is in favor of uh, treating even patients with varicocele grade 1, so where in theory the ROS and the um, uh, oxidative stress shouldn't be so much. But even in this case, the, the results are, uh, are good. The problem is that uh, today this, this therapy, they have still to be considered like empirical because the guidelines still doesn't give you given us um, a recommendation, a final recommendation with this therapy. So I would like to read what they say. No recommendation can be made for treatment with gonadotropines, anti-estrogens, 
and antioxidants. So all the medical treatment for infertility are still to be considered empirical. Even if the results in so many papers, in so many results are good, we have still to consider them empirical. And why this is important? Because uh, in 2011, this is um, an important paper that is making the point, the final point on the role of antioxidant in the treatment of male infertility, and they are stressing what I told you before. First of all, the ROS ma must be not so much because they, they can create damages to the cells. Second of all, they must not be um, small, small amount because in case it's not enough as well, the sperm has not the capability to to um, have a maturation that is good. And the third parameter that this paper is, is stressing is that you can evaluate the sperm motility, the number, you can evaluate all the parameters of the sperm. But what is important is the pregnancy rate because it's the number of pregnancy that you will, you will reach that give you the effect of the therapy, because you can have a perfect sperm, but you're not able to obtain a, preg a pregnancy, so in this case, it's useless to do a therapy. So keep in mind that the pregnancy rate is the most important parameters to take in evaluation together with live birth. More recently, um, this is a, a question. What about med empirical medical therapy that we are talking about? It's a promise or it's a panacea? This paper, after evaluating so many other papers, is concluding that uh, after a recent systematic review with meta-analysis, oral antioxidants results in a significant increase in the live birth rate compared with control treatments. So they are doing a conclusion on the live birth that is a, an important parameter instead of looking at the total sperm motility and all the characteristics of the sperm. And in 2015, this paper make some conclusion that I would like to share with you because I think that is the point where we are today. So all the points that are related here are what we know and what we have to keep in mind about antioxidant for today. Oxidative stress play an important role in many fertility. I showed you before. Excessive production of the ROS, in particular hydrogen peroxide, can induce lipid peroxidation and DNA fragmentation. Again, the DNA fragmentation is really important, as I told you before. Only few studies report data on pregnancy rate and live birth. Live birth and pregnancy rate, the most important parameters. Data on live birth are available only for vitamin E and zinc. A recent analysis concluded that antioxidants may improve pregnancy and live birth rate in the context of assisted reproductive techniques. So these products are useful even when you want to do an ART technique. There is need for well-designed and adequately powered randomized controlled trials investigating the impact of antioxidant on male infertility. This is mainly the reason because these have to be still considered an empirical therapy. And this is why uh, we started a protocol in our department that is a double-blind randomized placebo study in order to evaluate if this uh, antioxidant is able to obtain good results in patients. In particular, we, um, uh, we looked at the spermogram. It's the first parameters that we evaluated. So we defined patients with astenototerotozoospermia as a patient that have been included in our study. And we used the WHO parameters to, um, to do an inclu inclusion criteria, criteria of our patients. And um, these are all the parameters of the sperm that have been evaluated. And this is the design of our study. We had 104 patients divided mainly into groups, 52 with varicocele and 52 without varicocele. Because as we told before, it's really important, the difference between who is suffering from varicocele and who is not suffering from varicocele. Then the two groups have been again divided in people uptaking placebo and people uptaking supplement. And these are the results. Starting from the sperm concentration, we have an increase on 55% in patients with varicocele, an increase in 11% in people without varicocele. So in both cases, we have a statistically significant difference between uh, placebo and therapy. And these are the graphs that are explaining us. And as I told you before, the results with the placebo are definitely better. 
For the sperm number as well, you have a 25% increase and 9% increase uh, respectively for varicocele and non varicocele And even in this case, it is a statistically significant difference and is reported from uh, this graph. Regarding sperm motility, we have almost the same difference between varicocele and non varicocele While the two previous parameters were in favor of varicocele, in this case, we have a 12.6 and 13.8 increase between varicocele and non-varicocele, both of them still statistically significant. And these are the graphs. Last parameters of the sperm is the progressive sperm motility. And even in this case, we have exactly the same between varicocele and non-varicocele because it's 18.6% increase in both groups, and both of them are statistically significant. And finally, since we want to stress the pregnancy rate and the live birth, we had 12 pregnancy occurred out of 104 patients that have been enrolled. 10 of these 12 pregnancy occurred in patients taking the proxid, the, the therapy. 9 were with non-varicocele and 1 was with varicocele. The two pregnancy that occurred in placebo patients, just one was a live birth because one was an abortion. So there is a, a really big difference between therapy and non-therapy regarding the pregnancy rate. And this is the conclusion of this uh, study. As for any drugs, clinical efficacy of any natural compounds must be demonstrated by double-blind placebo-controlled trials. Only, the, only those are effective and can give us the re response to our questions. And my conclusion, I will just a bit move from the, from the topic, because um, I like talking about men's health, because sexual and reproductive medicine are just a part of the men's health, because this is something that is multidisciplinary. But why is it important? Because you have to take in consideration the men, as the WHO suggests us. The men's health refers to a state of a complete physical, mental, and social well-being as experienced by men, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And the infertility is one parameter that is really important. You see how much is increasing during the year the papers regarding male infertility. So we have more than 7,000 papers talking about male infertility. And as you can see, during the years, there is always an increase. And this is the paper that is my conclusion. This is a paper from a group of Q8, and they talk about sperm parameters have a good health and longevity paradigmatic index. So what they are saying, that maybe in a future with the sperm, if you evaluate the sperm, you can evaluate the health status of a male. Why this? First of all, because we know that there are two lines of evidence that link sperm parameters to male health. Fertile couples live longer, and this is an epidemiological date. Most health disorders have a deterioration effect on sperm parameters. So people that is not healthy, they have even a disorder in their sperm. You see, diabetes, smoking, hypertension, metabolic syndrome, obesity, all of them report the sperm quality that is decrease respect health people. Look at this picture. This is really good. This is the, the pics of uh, a sperm that is healthy, while this is a, the sperm of a, pa of a patient suffering from diabetes is completely uh, without his shape and without all of his uh, typical characteristic. In fact, in conclusion, they say that the psychological variation of spermatogenesis and the significant impact on individual lifestyle choice, such exercise, diet, health awareness, are important variables. People that have a, a healthy life, they have better parameters. Spare parameters are affected early in the pathogenesis of medical disorders. Anyhow, the conclusion report that the sperm parameters for monitoring male health require further evaluation. So this is just a provocation. But maybe in the future, with the increase of our knowledge, we can arrive to this. In particular, if we are talking about the future, about evaluating the sperm quality, the proteomics will be for sure the future, because after DNA fragmentation, the proteomics will bring us in a, in a near future changing the way men think about their sexual health. Thank you.